All right, that texture experiment on the flame extensions didn't seem to work quite the way I wanted to. Even though they were coated with an extra layer of the mache paste, it didn't seem to smooth them out. But since I want them to be kind of flickery, flamey anyway, I don't think that'll be a problem. Uh, so now I'm going to start putting on my artificial ridges to build this up and give it a more pumpkin-y look. Wish me luck, and let's hope this paper clay. Yeah, nice. Just made it. <laughs> one thing's for sure, this is going to be one of the strongest pumpkins I've ever made. The downside is that this is going to take forever to dry adequately. I'm going to hope to avoid that by putting this thing in a drying station over the next few days, which is effectively just a fan on it and a pair of heat lamps blasting it at all times. Or at least all times when I'm home and don't need to worry about the house catching on fire because some idiot left on as a heat lamp when he went to work. And something happened, because the fan blew something over. Contravening side of the added strength, this is going to be one of the heaviest pumpkins I have ever done. Okay, so note to the crowds, when doing a fancy carved pumpkin, I would say during the paper strip phase, do maybe a layer or two, and then I would add under that some sort of artificial ridging, like a half a toilet paper tube, to build that effect in, so you can easily leave one face relatively fat, uh, flat for your fancy carve while preserving the rest of the pumpkin in a pumpkin-like configuration. And that should hopefully make it so you don't have to do what I'm doing right here. Or just paint the damn thing orange and if anybody doesn't like it, the hell with them. If I take any of these projections too far down and they end up here, I put them on the bucket, they're going to start to intersect with the bucket, bucket, bump, scrape, and start to look like crap. So I'm going to have to take them down slow, careful, and probably not all the way. I'm lucky that my paper clay at this stage is pretty moist. If I was using a dry paper clay with just a hint too much of the paper pulp in it, this would be a real pain in the ass and I'd have to get the paintbrush out and do some very, very heavy smoothing. I'm gonna smooth in the end anyway, but I have to start by smoothing if this paper clay was much drier, or much, no, nope, drier works. 
that was the word I was going for. This paper clay was very, very dry. Better than I expected. Of course, my expectations were based on my first pumpkin, where it turned out okay, sort of-ish. Good. All right. Let's let this sucker dry, and then see what kind of mischief we can get up to on it next. Hey, everybody. I am pretty much set with the exterior of this sucker and I'm about to do the stem. I found this old piece of wire that I had with a base that I glued together that I attempted to use, I wanted to use on a previous pumpkin but it just never happened. So since I don't feel like going absolutely nuts on making brand new stem, all new bits, and this will probably work a little bit better since it has this four pronged uh, grab here, I'm just going to use this component to build a hopefully pretty darn good stem for it. I don't want this stem to be too fancy because the whole point of doing this pumpkin was to do the fancy carving. If I make the stem too outrageous, I think it's going to distract from the pumpkin. So I just want this stem to be pretty basic. In case you're wondering, yes, all I'm doing is just crumpling paper around this thing. More than anything, stems are just bulk. Just gonna let that dry and harden, and then once it does, I'll put the other tines in place. We'll lock them with hot glue as well. A fun stem without overdoing it, taking away from the front. Now, just per a normal stem, we're going to give it an outer coat of bache, and then we'll paper clay it up. Let that dry, and we'll get some paper clay on it. And then the world is starting to look really, really good for this project. Some paper clay here that's just too darn wet and mushy. So I've grabbed about a half a handful of uh, the paper pulp and uh, work this into it. And this should fix the too dry paper clay. So if you ever have paper clay that is too moist, too runny, grab a little bit of paper pulp and mush it in. 
I should start behaving for you again. Just a little bracer on the side. Add to the scene. I'll do another on the other one side on the other side later. And this one's had a chance to dry. One thing I'm making sure I do with these tree branches as much as possible is taking their edges and pushing them down so I get a good bond with the pumpkin underneath. There's nothing more awful than making an overlay like this and then getting to your final stage and having it practically separate from your pumpkin. So just make sure these edges are smooshed down and in so they bond decently well. Kind of wish I'd started with the stem. I'm worried now that anything I do on here, if I'm working up on the stem, I might bump my tree. But I'm just gonna have to take that risk. All right, unfortunately the camera cut out on me last time before I could finish up what I was up to. And all that pretty much was was the final shaping of the tip of the stem. And I added a bit on the bottom here so that the pumpkin would sit flat. It's been out in its drying time, so I'm just gonna give it its first coat of sealant. Get it ready for, <laughs> get it ready for its occasion. Remember the same general concept applies 
the front here as with any pumpkin face. What's going to happen? God, that's dark. All right, I'll get my light later on. But what's going to happen here is as you brush the back, you're going to get drips coming down the front. And watch out to make sure that they don't form drops, which will then solidify and start to look all sorts of crazy and mess up your future painting.